in this video we want to look at the lab diagnosis of kala azar so the target is to look at the lab diagnosis of kala azar <clears throat> okay that is uh, visceral leishmaniasis in old world right so there is direct and indirect so this is uh, these are the three things that we will study under direct in indirect you will study again a lot <clears throat> so what we'll do is first let us start off with a recap of what we have seen so far we started off with leishmania we saw that it is a protozoan it is a flagellate protozoan which lives uh, in the blood so it is hemoflagellate protozoan the vector which transmits uh, leishmania is uh, phlebotomus or sand fly this is the sand fly this is the leishmania this is the amastigote form and this is the promastigate form mastigote promastigote amastigote guys this is amastigote this is promastigote okay then <clears throat> what else uh, we saw in the last video we saw uh, the classification of leishmania so based on the diseases that it causes in um, old world it causes uh, these are the leishmania found in new world these are the leishmania found old world means like india africa etc new world means america south america north america everything so basically in old world you have visceral leishmaniasis cutaneous leishmaniasis in new world you have visceral leishmaniasis cutaneous leishmaniasis so we have seen that uh, leishmania donovani which causes kala azar it's sitting here you can see kala azar dum dum fever this is what we want to study the lab diagnosis of in this uh, video right it also causes post kala azar dermal leishmaniasis so this is what we are trying to target the lab diagnosis of visceral visceral leishmaniasis or kala azar or dum dum fever then we saw <clears throat> the history geographical distribution habitat morphology we have seen we also saw the life cycle pathogenesis of uh, leishmania donovani so in this video we want to look at the lab diagnosis and treatment if you remember the life cycle this was what was taught how uh, in uh, man um, the promastigote enters the man and it becomes an amastigote it travels in our blood and it lives in the macrophages giving that ld bodies right ld bodies then these uh, amastigotes are picked up by the next sand fly which bites the man and in sand fly this amastigote becomes again promastigote and multiplies and all that this much you have seen in uh, life cycle then you saw the pathogenicity where you saw that uh, it will block the reticulo endothelial system the spleen will become enlarged the liver will be enlarged the bone marrow will have lot of parasitized uh, macrophages the lymph nodes will have lymphadenopathy cachexia uh, there's lot of weight loss there'll be pancytopenia that means rbc wbc platelets all are reduced in number the skin will be darkly pigmented hence it's called kala azar most untreated patients die in 2 years because of other complications post kala azar dermal leishmaniasis also can be caused where there are depigmented macules and erythematous patches and nodular lesions etc so now we will move on to lab diagnosis of kala azar so basically kala azar lab diagnosis there's direct and indirect in this slide what you are able to see is only the direct okay so under direct you have demonstration of ld bodies culture animal inoculation so you have to either demonstrate the amastigote or the promastigote okay in uh, demonstration of ld bodies ld bodies you already know the macrophages will have these uh, amastigote which go on multiplying so there will be lot of uh, amastigotes inside a macrophage that will be called as an ld body or a leishmania donovani body will come to that in culture you will try to demonstrate a promastigote and in animal inoculation again you will try to demonstrate an amastigote okay in indirect evidence uh, uh, very typically you will not show the organism but you will tip, uh, demonstrate the antigen or the antibodies against it you will show that there is that dna or uh, present that particular dna and you will also do some tests like some serum tests we'll go into that then skin test skin test is basically a delayed hypersensitivity test just like a mantor test or a lepromin test right similar to that you have a lishmanin test or montenegro test montenegro test and in the bl uh, blood picture of the person you can see that there will be anemia pancytopenia etc right so these are all indirect so that was just a overview of the lab diagnosis now let us get into the details of the lab diagnosis of kala azar now coming to the direct evidence in direct evidence you will demonstrate what you will demonstrate the ld bodies ld bodies means something like this <clears throat> that is a macrophage what will happen our macrophage 
this is a macrophage let us say when the promastigote comes this macrophage will engulf this uh, promastigote this promastigote what will happen inside the macrophage it will become an amastigote this amastigote goes on <clears throat> multiplying inside this macrophage so lot of amastigotes can be demonstrated that is what you're exactly seeing here if you notice can you see what is being shown here this one these are these dot 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 inside a monocyte these are the this is a these are the ld bodies this is a neutrophil neutrophil also is a macrophage right so here also you can show ld bodies <clears throat> so demonstration of ld bodies or the amastigotes in macrophages and also extracellular that is in the blood also there will be amastigotes so this this demonstration of ld bodies is the gold standard it's the direct evidence for leishmaniasis it's the gold standard for uh, lab diagnosis of leishmaniasis okay <clears throat> so you will take a thick blood film okay or you can take a splenic aspirate which is not safe you not not exactly do that bone marrow aspirate or lymph node aspirate uh, but in old world leishmaniasis lymph node is not that uh, affected that's what they are saying lymph node aspirate usually in the new world leishmaniasis they will use you will use the jimsa stain or the lishman stain and you will demonstrate ld bodies what exactly are these ld bodies they are the amastigotes of uh, leishmania <clears throat> Now moving on to culture, guys. So we are done with one box here of direct. Now we are moving on to culture. Now culture, there are very specific media they are mentioning, like NNN media, NNN media which has rabbit blood. This is what is NNN media, and uh, this one is uh, Snyder liquid media with uh, which can also be added with fetal calf serum. So this is uh, snyder liquid media nnn media remember slider snyder uh, media liquid media and nnn the rabbit blood agar slope media can be used to demonstrate the promastigotes of uh, leishmania this is the promastigote so that is what is culture moving on to animal inoculation so some animal torture uh, being done here on the chinese golden hamster or mice you can do animal inoculation and uh, you can demonstrate from the nodules that develop from that smear or whatever uh, from that nodules you can demonstrate the amastigote so you are demonstrating amastigote in the ld body and in animal inoculation right in both of them you are demonstrating amastigote in culture you will make it a promastigote okay culture will be what what what, what and all nnn media that is a rabbit blood uh, agar slope and a snyder liquid media with fetal calf serum if you want you can add okay so this was the direct lab diagnosis of kala azar we are almost uh, like half is done direct uh, direct lab diagnosis over only now we will move on to indirect uh, this is indirect now look at this so many arrows here 1 2 3 4 5 totally five boxes here under indirect evidence so let us look at sero diagnosis here sero diagnosis you will detect the antigen or the antibody correct are you able to see you will detect the antigen or you will detect the antibody so to detect the antigen you can use elisa very typically you write standard things you will detect uh, the antigen using elisa you can detect the antibody also but you should have the specific antigen with you correct to detect the antibody you should have the antigen ready with you so to uh, uh, detect this uh, antibody what antigens you will use you will use wkk antigen like wakka wakka antigen that is um, uh, wkk antigen for leishmania remember uh, cft that is complement fixation test uh, using the wkk antigen that is white sky klangenstein and kun antigen so this www sorry w, wkk antigen so you will use the WKK antigen and the RK39 antigen. It's very difficult, I understand, to remember all the antigen names. But anyways, uh, remember Waka Waka antigen for uh, Lishmania. That is WKK antigen. Okay, then you have the RK39 ant antigen. So KKK again K here. So a lot of Ks. Um, Kala Azar, Kala Azar, Kala Azar. Something like that you can remember. WK, Kala Azar, Kala Azar, Kala Azar. Hmm? <clears throat> so WKK antigen and RK39 antigen. Now, uh, what are the tests that you will use? You will use complement fixation test, DAT something, Im indirect immunofluorescent antibody test, counter immunoelectrophoresis, dot ELISA, not just ELISA, this is some dot ELISA. ICT using uh, RK39 antigen, that is rapid immunochromatographic dipstick. 
Okay, so whatever you can, you try to remember. At least remember the antigen names here. WKK antigen, RK39 antigen. What are the tests? Complement fixation test, ELISA, that is dot ELISA. Indirect immunofluorescent um, antibody. Counter immunoelectrophoresis, uh, immunochromatographic dipstick. Moving on now, <clears throat> the first box is over, that is serodiagnosis is over. Then typical uh, molecular diagnosis, very standard, you will do DNA probe and PCR, very standard this is. Actually they said this is still in the evolving form for PCR, right? So people, <clears throat> what exactly are we seeing? We are seeing indirect uh, lab diagnosis for uh, Lishminia Donovani, Kala Azar. Okay, which causes visceral uh, leishmaniasis in old world. Now we are done with the first two boxes. We are moving on to the third box that is here. Non-specific serum test. Okay, so they are saying it is not specific in the name itself. So there are two tests here. Niper aldehyde formal formogel test and Chopra's antimony test. <clears throat> so here you will test uh, for hyper gamma globinemia. See one of the features in... Uh, <clears throat> clinical features, one of the clinical features is hypergamma globinemia. Lot of antibodies will be there against RBC, against WBC. So hypergamma globinemia will be there. So to detect this, you will use Niper's aldehyde test or a Chopra's antimony test. Just listen to what this Niper's aldehyde test is. Okay. So currently, what are we discussing? We are going to go to this Niper's aldehyde formal G, uh, gel test. Okay. So basically, here you will take uh, this patient's serum, right? And you will add uh, formalin. Okay. And then you will shake. So what you will see is some kind of a white, egg white or something like this. I will try to show you. Looks like this egg white color. So basically this egg white color will be there. It's positive only if there is hyper gamma globinemia. But it does not say anything about visceral leishmaniasis. Hyper gamma globinemia is there. That means it is, uh, that's what it is telling. It's not specific to leishmania. But in cutaneous leishmaniasis, it will be negative because in cutaneous leishmaniasis, there will be no hypergamma globinemia. Now we are done with this third box. Now we are moving on to the fourth box. Uh, is that fine guys? Are you finding it too much to handle? Just uh, take a deep breath. I understand there is a lot of information here. <sighs> Very good. So now we will move on to the last two tests. They are not at all difficult. Don't worry. Oh, we didn't cover this Chopra's antimony test. Okay, let us look at Chopra's antimony test. So in Chopra's antimony test, what happens? You will take some uh, uh, dryer's tube. Okay, you will take serum with distilled water. And you will add 4% um, solution of urea stibamine. Okay. So you will see some uh, formation of loculant precipitate indicates it's positive test. Okay, this is little more sensitive than aldehyde test. Anyways, uh, this is indicating only hyper gamma globinemia. This condition you have seen even in multiple myeloma and all, right? So you cannot. It's not a specific for leishmaniasis. Okay. Moving on, guys. Now we will move on to skin test. Skin test means this one. So basically, what they will do intradermal injection. They will give of the uh, intradermal injection they will give of this um, antigen, right? A very, very small purified antigen they will in, uh, inject to find out whether this person was previously exposed to Kala Azar. So basically this is just going to tell that uh, uh, whether this person uh, was, uh, you know, had Kala Azar. If he is having Kala Azar, it will be negative. If he had Kala Azar, it is going to be positive. So I don't know if uh, I, I never had Kala Azar, let's touch it, and I am not having active Kala Azar. Then what will this test show? I wonder because uh, from the textbook that much information as of now I have not got. But what you have to understand here is uh, in active Kala Azar, this test will be negative. In uh, if, a, if there is a positive test, it indicates that there was prior exposure to leishmania parasite okay so this is a delayed type of hypersensitivity reaction intradermal injection you know all this right it's the same thing you have seen in tuberculin test and lepromin test so this is montenegro test okay montenegro test or leishmanian skin test okay now let us move on to blood picture uh, anemia Blood picture, uh, sorry, blood picture, what will be there? Anemia will be there, leukopenia will be there, thrombocytopenia will be there, uh, hypergamma globinemia will be there in visceral uh, leishmaniasis and reverse albumin globulin ratio. There is a reversal of the albumin globulin ratio. Okay. So something to do with proteins. Uh, there is some reversal. Okay. 
So this was about the lab diagnosis of uh, Kala Azar. We have seen both. This is the in, uh, direct and uh, we have seen the indirect. So basically direct what and all we saw. We saw demonstration of the LD bodies. We saw demonstration of LD bodies, culture, animal inoculation. These three we saw. Then in uh, indirect what and all we have seen. We have seen uh, antibody antigen detection, DNA, PCR, non-specific hyper gamma globinemia, skin test, then uh, blood picture where you are seeing anemia, pancytopenia especially. Okay. So that's all in uh, lab diagnosis. Let's move on and just put a word on the uh, diagnosis of the post Kala Azar dermal leishmaniasis. Here uh, there will be nodules, you know that, and uh, you will when you do uh, biopsy of the nodule, what will you get? You will get amastigote form only because in humans you will find only amastigote form, correct? Amastigote form. So uh, you can the biopsy material you can culture, and when you culture, what will you see? Promastigote form. When you do animal inoculation, what will you see again? Amastigote form, right? In the nodule. So basically, this is what you have to understand. It's almost the same thing as uh, visceral uh, leishmaniasis. Immunodiagnosis uh, has no role. They are saying. Okay. Lastly, we'll put a word on the treatment of uh, Kala Azar, guys. Treatment of Kala Azar. Pay attention here. Uh, there is something called as uh, antimonial compound. Okay, pentavalent antimonial compound. This is what you have to write in the exam. If they ask pentavalent antimonial compound, and the examples are here. You can see this sodium stibogluconate. Okay, sodium stibogluconate injection. Sodium stibogluconate is one of the examples of pentavalent antimonial compound, and you have meglu, meglumine antimonate, meglumine antimonate. Okay, antimonial antimonate. So this is easy to remember, I think. Antimonial antimonate, meglumine. So this is the one, which uh, meglumine antimonate, and this one is. Uh, Sodium stibogluconate. Okay, both are injections. Other than this, you have options like amphotericin B, parmomycin, miltifosin. Okay, so options are there. Profile access means how do you prevent uh, getting this leishmaniasis? Uh, hygiene, early detection, treatment. Right, you have to reduce sandalize uh, uh, population. Okay. All the standard things you write, okay, hygiene, mosquito net, and all that standard uh, things about profile access you can write. Whatever you have learned from community medicine, okay. So this completes the Lishmania uh, topic. Lishmania Donovani is what we have covered. Donovani, Lishmania Donovani is what we have covered, right? So in the next video we will meet with a newer parasite, okay. That's all from our side now. Bye bye.